Today on How It's Made. Yacht Wheels. This product needs to be ship shape. The ship's wheel adjusts the angle of the rudder, changing the direction of the vessel. Helmsmen on older ships steered using a tiller, a long stick fixed directly to the rudder. The introduction of the wheel seems to have taken mariners in the right direction. This company makes yacht wheels as large as a metre and a half in diameter. It uses two traditional shipbuilding woods, American holly and Burmese teak, species that are as beautiful as they are durable. Both types of wood are cut into long, thin strips that will become the wheel's rim. The strips are measured with digital calipers, then sanded down to a thickness of just 3.1 millimetres. Using a disc sander, the ends are angled into what are known as scarf joints. These angles will be fitted together to join the strips. After each strip has been coated with epoxy, it's attached with clamps to a round jig, which has been waxed beforehand to prevent sticking. The glue is waterproof because the wheels are often exposed to rough weather up on deck. Each two metre long strip is gradually bent all the way around the jig. A spring-loaded clamp temporarily holds each end of the strip in place until the scarf joint is aligned with that of the next strip. It takes up to eight hours of non-stop work to lay all the strips. The blonde holly and darker teak are alternated for a total of seven layers. Then the rim is left to set overnight. To make each of the five spokes, strips of holly and teak are joined temporarily with double-sided tape. A computer-guided cutting machine then carves an opening through the middle and shapes the outer edge into a triangular shape. This reduces the spoke's weight and helps it fit to the rim later on. Next, the tape is removed and the wood strips are glued together along with others made of carbon fibre, which strengthen the spokes while keeping it lightweight. A wax jig is placed in the centre and clamped in place. The spoke is then left to set overnight. The next day, the dry glue is sanded away. Then a router is used to round the edges. Together, the four wooden and three carbon fiber layers are just two and a half centimeters thick. A template is traced onto a stack of 14 curved strips of holly and teak, which has been pre-glued. Following these lines with a bandsaw creates a fairing, the component which will join each spoke to the rim. Now a hole is drilled in each fairing. And a dowel is inserted in order to position a reinforcing strip of carbon fibre at the top. To join the spokes to the rim, strong fibreglass dowels which were earlier glued to the rim are now inserted into the fairings and into holes in the spokes, also glued beforehand. The spokes are clamped to the rim through the openings. Then, an aluminium hub is positioned in the centre and tapped into place with a mallet. Now, with a jigsaw, a sliver is cut from the ends of the fairings so they will curve into the rim. A router rounds off the vertical edges of the wheel. The fairings are filed by hand to complete the smooth transition to the rim. These finishing touches alone can take up to five hours to complete. It takes another five hours to gradually round off the horizontal edge. To protect the wheel from the elements, especially sun damage, first a polyester primer is applied. Then this is sanded and two coats of waterproof varnish are added. Once aboard the yacht, Five stainless steel bolts attach the wheel to a pedestal that connects to the rest of the steering mechanism. 
To change how fast the rudder moves, you simply turn a knob at the center of the wheel. How's that for power steering? It's all plain sailing, really.